Hello everyone, my name is Quinn Cuslidge and I'm a VR developer and technical artist and I go to school at Ringling College of Art and Design. Today I'm going to be talking about the MetaHuman Creator and essentially this video is just going to be kind of an overview of what the editor looks like, how you can get it yourself, and essentially what I plan to do with this technology once I get the free time to fully experiment with it. So first things first, I just want to tell you guys exactly how to get this before I go into, I guess, the tutorial or overview of the creator software itself. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about what I plan to do with it. So first things first, you're going to want to go to this page, link in the description, and you're going to want to go to this request access. You're going to fill out a small form and then you're going to wait a few days. They'll send you an email and that'll give you access to the MetaHuman Creator and kind of everything you need to get started. Once you've kind of signed up for the access and you're and you're ready to go, you're going to want to uh, download an app called Quixel Bridge, and that's going to give you access to not only your metahumans but the metahuman, uh, the metahumans that are created by Epic. So you know, here's here are my metahumans, and the cool thing about Bridge is that I can actually launch my uh, metahumans directly from Quixel Bridge. So if I want to edit my first metahuman, for example, all I have to do is go up to here and say Start Metahuman Creator, and that's going to open up their software. So the way that Epic is doing this is they're you're actually kind of remote connecting to their software so you don't download anything to use MetaHuman. You actually connect remotely to this website and you're allowed to edit as many MetaHumans as you like and it's completely free and you get about an hour per session. So once you've loaded it and connected to the software you're gonna see uh, probably a different screen than me because you haven't created a MetaHuman yet but these are the MetaHumans that I've created recently and the best way to describe this software is it kind of feels like a really generic uh, RPG character creator where you can kind of edit the face a little bit and do certain things in order to make your character. A at least that's how it feels for me. And one thing that I always do in an RPG is I try and create a character that looks pretty close to myself. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing in this video as I go over all of the settings. So I'm going to throw up an older photo of myself. And I thought this one was kind of funny. It's me around the time I graduated uh, high school, but it's I think it's got a really good framing of my face and kind of my hair. So we're going to use that. The lighting is, of course, terrible, but I I don't really have any other better photos of myself. So we're just going to go with that for now. So first things first, I'm going to try and find a proxy. So you can't start from absolute scratch. It's not like you're modeling this character from scratch yourself. You pick one of their presets and then you can pick more of their presets and then blend your face together with the other presets. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that a lot of these characters are quite a bit older than myself. And so you're going to see different age lines and wrinkles that uh, I wouldn't see on myself if I looked in a mirror. And I'd say... You know, if I'm going to be making a character, I might as well make them a slightly more attractive version of myself. Otherwise, what's the point? So I'm going to pick this base character. I don't even know how to say his name. You know, obviously not very close to me, but now we're inside the MetaHuman Creator. So first things first, if you want to full screen the actual editor itself, you're going to want to go up and uh, click this full screen icon right here, which I'm going to do right now. And now we have our character here. And you can see that they're, he's playing a simple kind of idle animation. He's got a sweater and a pair of jeans on and some uh, really ugly bands. So this is kind of the base character. And as you can see, you know, he is definitely more attractive than I am. He's got some better hair, a nice uh, five o'clock shadow there, and some really strong brown eyes, which are very different from my light blue eyes. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna figure out his face blending. Before I do that though, I kind of want to show you guys a little bit of the UI and how to use it before we get into that. So if you want to see your connection settings to this software, how long your session is going, latency, uh, you know, to, to debug in case it's running slow for you, you want to go right up here. And then in the lower right corner, you're going to see the duration of your session. So I've spent five minutes in here now. Uh, you'll see your connection type and other things. And this will kind of help you determine whether or not your network connection is good and how that's going to affect your process of creating this character. So I'm not going to use this because my connection is actually pretty good here at Ringling. So I'm just going to move on from that. Next thing is uh, we're inside of this kind of gray studio. And this is mostly what I'm going to use for this tutorial. But I just wanted to show you guys that you can also put yourself into an indoor, an outdoor or a uh, like a silhouette if you wanted to see the shape of your character itself, which is something that is often used if you're creating a character from scratch. You're going to pull up that silhouette and you're going to make sure that all the shapes make sense for a human figure. But I'm going to stay inside studio. You'll also notice that the way that the lighting affects your character's face is actually pretty realistic. And, you know, there are some uncanny valley elements to these characters, but as far as I'm concerned, they look pretty good. 
The next thing is camera control. So if you want to rotate around your cam camera, it's like any other 3D software. So you hold Alt and then you drag and you can rotate. If you left click and then push out with your mouse, holding Alt, you will zoom out from your character. And if you want to automate that a little bit more, you have camera controls up here and you can use your keyboard. So if I go to one, that frames in the face, two is a little bit farther out, three is a mid range at the torso, uh, four is at the legs and five is at the feet. So, and then six is just framing in the whole character. So we're gonna go back to face cause that's what I'm primarily focused on for this tutorial. Now you'll see the hotkey reference over on the right as well. I'm not gonna go over everything there because it's pretty straightforward and intuitive. What I like to do first off is actually stop this animation because you cannot edit your character or use any of the blend functions if the animation is playing. So you can play it with the green button, you can stop it with that. You could also pause the animation, but you have to actually stop the animation in order to edit your character. So let's go into the blending first. One thing also is you can hide hair if your computer's moving very slow. So I would recommend that if you're, you're experiencing any latency issues, hide the hair for now. And then you can also toggle clay material like ZBrush. But we're gonna turn both of those off. So now we're in the blend function. So the way that this works is we move into the blend tab in the lower left here, and we can see all of the characters' faces. I don't have any other preset characters dragged into this upper left window. So I'm gonna find some other ones with features more similar to mine. Now, a lot of people have described me as my dad with my mom's eyes. So I'm gonna click a female character that looks very similar to my mother. I just moved Vivian in because she looks similar to my mom. And now I'm going to try and find someone who looks slightly similar to my dad with the same facial features. Because the way this works is that you're blending characters together. And I like to think of it as I am creating myself from people that look like me. So of course, I focus on my mother and my father first. My dad looks a lot like me, uh, but slightly different in certain ways. I would describe him as looking a little bit closer to this, but not quite. Sorry, dad. Um, and then drag one more character in to get the full blend function so you can blend your character together with the characters you drag in. You can actually do quite a bit more than just three if you want full control, but for this tutorial and time purposes, we're gonna try and make it as fast as possible, so I'm gonna stick with the three. The last guy I'm going to pick is uh, this older gentleman, Gavin. So, now that I have picked these characters, I can blend between their features in order to get something that looks closer to myself. So I'm gonna frame my character in the center here, and then I'm gonna select specific parts of his face, which is these little spheres that you're seeing here that can blend them together. So this is actually a pretty simple process. You just grab what you wanna edit, and if I drag it out, you'll see my eyes changing closer to the female in the lower left here, and then closer to the male in the upper. Right, so I'm gonna drag my eyes to be like right about here. I have slightly larger eyes than the average person because I have, I would say more feminine eyes than most men. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing. I would say that my face is a little bit rounder than this base character, so I'm gonna drag that out as well. You know, my nose looks about the same as this individual's, but it sticks out slightly more like that. And then of course, uh, the cheekbones we've moved up in, in the left here too. As for the jawline, you know, it's actually pretty close to what I am. And of course I wanna leave a little bit more of a chiseled jaw because again, if I'm creating myself as a game character, I'm going to exaggerate some features to make myself look more attractive. Now we can move on to the skin tone. So this is kind of really cool. And it, if you know Unreal Engine, this kind of translates over because these are all scalar parameters with color assignments, right? So you'd see something similar to this in the HLSL node-based programming language inside of Unreal Engine itself. You know, you have your color and then you have your scalar parameters, parameters that control certain things about your material. So we have, of course, roughness, that's how shiny or how not shiny your skin is. Contrast, of course, which is in every software, how much your skin contrasts. So if you see me dragging the slider back and forth, you're gonna see more contrast on me. I'm going to control Z because I actually don't wanna change that. And then of course we have skin tone. So if I am a darker individual, I would move it to the right here. And then since I am actually a lighter skinned person, I'm gonna move it more into this area here. Uh, slightly more olive. Right, now we're gonna go to freckles. I don't actually have any freckles, but they're actually pretty easy to toggle on, and you can also change the saturation of the freckles to fit your face better. And then of course we have accents. So this is something I will edit because I have a skin condition called rosacea, which actually uh, ramps up the pigment directly in my cheeks and makes my cheeks look very red. So it always looks like I'm blushing. So I'm gonna move that up so you can really see that I have red cheeks and I'll up the saturation on that as well. I want to keep that because it's a defining feature of my face. 
Now we're gonna go down to the eye slider. So here we have the ability to set the color. So these are just presets. Um, and if, you, if you're fine with these, keep going, but we can also go really into everything. So if you wanna take a photo of your eye, you can change like the individual pigments inside of your eye, as well as your iris type and the color balance between the iris and the outer layer, the <laughs> sclera of your eyes, I guess. <laughs> I don't actually know the eye terms, but I just wanted to let you guys know that that was there. For me, you know, my eye is a uh, blue slash hazel, like a very clo closer to blue though. So I'm gonna pick this blue eye color right here. It's hard to look at yourself and be accurate, but I'm gonna say that looks pretty close to my eyes. Next we have teeth. So he opens his mouth up, you can see his teeth. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I brush my teeth quite a bit, uh, try to floss too. So I'm gonna change that to be a lot whiter. This guy's got some yellow teeth. Change that black color. I do not have as I do not have as much black as the average person because I'm a little bit of a freak when it comes to dental hygiene. So we'll move that off, and uh, you can also change certain things about your jaw. So if you have an underbite or an overbite, you can change the displacement of your teeth. Then we have, of course, makeup. So if you're doing a female character, you can change your lipstick or your uh, you know eye effects. So if I wanted to give my character some eyeshadow or eyeliner, I could do that. And if you accidentally click that on and don't know how to turn it off, just click back onto the effect that you had just turned on. Now we're gonna go take a look at hair. So the hair is actually really cool because this is called a groom card. And essentially it's just a bunch of cards that are set on your hair to look like hair. And that's something that came out with Unreal Engine within the last few years. I can't exactly remember when, but it was around the time that I started using Unreal. And uh, you can also, this also is where I wanna cover the level of detail. So at LOD zero, that's like the highest detail that you can possibly get, and that's what we're looking at right now. But if you are running a little bit slower and you want to set your level of detail lower, and this is what you would do if you were using your MetaHuman in a mobile game or a VR experience, which in my case is, will be the case because I cannot run anything higher than uh, LOD four for my experience. So LOD four removes the hair and I'm currently figuring out a workaround to get that working in Unreal Engine. If I keep my character on LOD 1, it actually crashes my engine and my entire computer. So that's LOD 0, and if you set it to 7, it looks like a cyberpunk character, right? So we'll set that back. As for that, that's pretty much my hair, I'd say. I mean, I have, I have it shorter on the sides, but I they don't actually have kind of a preset for me, and there isn't a direct way to change the hairstyle. So if you wanted to change your hairstyle to match exactly what you have, you're gonna have to go into a, uh, another software to change that. My hair is slightly lighter than this character. It's a little bit of a dirty blonde slash brown. So I'm gonna move that to where it's supposed to be. And I don't have any salt and pepper in my hair. So this is how gray your hair is. And I don't have any, cause I'm only 21. So I haven't, at least I haven't seen any gray hairs yet. <laughs> Next we have the eyebrows. So. This is actually very straightforward. Essentially, you can change the color, the roughness, the salt and pepper in your eyebrows, right? And the gray, right? You can change the salt and pepper, which is the grayness again, and you can change the color if you need to. Mine are very dark, and I have slightly bushier eyebrows than the average person. Because who has time to trim their eyebrows? I mean, come on. <laughs> Next, we have eyelashes, so... I mean, I would see this being used more if someone's making a female character because um, generally women have longer eyelashes than men. So I'm gonna leave mine at the preset value. My eyelashes are very short. And then we're gonna get to the beard. I have never been able to grow a beard and I don't have a beard right now. So I'm gonna remove that so it better fits my face. And then the mustache is actually a separate UI element, but we're gonna cover the beards first. So. Obviously, they have a few preset beards, and these are, again, hair cards, so it's completely dependent on your performance. I would go without a beard if you're working on anything less than one of the new NVIDIA RTX cards because your computer will likely crash. So I usually take the facial hair off, and also it matches myself better because I don't have facial hair. And just one thing to note about the uh, both the mustache and the beard is that we have custom scalar parameters inside of the beard as well. So inside of that color changer, so you can really tweak the settings to get that correct beard color. And then of course we have roughness and grayness as well. I keep calling it grayness, they call it salt and pepper, but it's like, how gray is your beard? And then finally we have the body section of the MetaHuman Creator software. So if we go down, we can change our body type. So if I wanted to make myself, you know, a chubbier 
individual I could. I'm gonna actually stick with just the base because I am neither chubby nor am I like built like this. I mean, this guy is built and I am definitely not this skinny. So we're gonna go up to this more built individual until they create something better. And then you can also change, you know, uh, the height of your character. So if you wanna make a short king, you can make a short king. I'm average height around five nine ish which some would argue is short but i don't care <laughs> this is a, a virtual human obviously it's going to be peak uh and then we have clothing so if you want to change the clothing from what options they have i would recommend learning a software called marvelous designer that's going to allow you to apply whatever clothing you want to your character so if you're planning on adding your own clothing export your character without clothing, right? Because it's gonna be a lot easier to put clothing on a character that doesn't have clothes rather than delete the clothing off the character to assign new clothing. So if you want a t-shirt, export your man shirtless. Otherwise, add a sweater of some sort. I mean, I'm gonna make this guy's sweater match my channel colors, so I'm just gonna go into the uh, primary colors. I think I'm rocking a purple color scheme now, so I'll just kind of change that to a more purple and then for my secondary color i am rocking a I'd say it's like a darker red if i had to be if i had to be honest so there we go and i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep the uh sweater because i'm actually a big fan of just wearing sweaters all the time then we have the bottom so this is the jean availability same thing as the shirt if you want to make your own jeans or pants or other crazy garment that goes on your legs you're going to want to do that in either marvelous or potentially maya if you're going for like robot legs in which case you will have to redo the metahuman rig or at least reskin the metahuman rig onto your new legs so if you're a beginner and you don't know anything about rigging your animation i would keep the preset on or just go without pants like you can right now and then again with the uh the classic RPG character creator, they always have an undergarment that is forever on the character. So no worries about getting scarred for life or getting demonetized. <laughs> and then we just have shoes. So again, it's just standard, very, very standard garments. You can make your own if you want to. I probably will end up doing so for my purposes, but you know, I guess I guess the Doc Martens look pretty good. <laughs> or the off the off-brand Doc Martens, if you will. And that's kind of the very basic setup to get yourself started creating a metahuman character. And I'm gonna just actually just jump into a few other options you can do. So if I wanted to move specific parts of my face, so if you really wanted to go into the nitty gritty detail of creating your character and you wanna get those shapes down perfectly, you can actually move shapes around to match yourself a little bit better. And of course, control Z and to re undo and control Y to redo, just like in Photoshop, Maya, pretty much any 3D software or creation software in general. And you can raise your eyebrows if they're a little higher up. You can make your eyes a little bit bigger. And, you know, of course your mouth, you can change the angle of your mouth if you have more of a smile or not. And then your chin as well. So like pretty much anything is editable in here. But if you wanna to go to the next level, you can also go to the sculpt settings. So this lets you change your face on like exact points. So if I wanted to change it so my jawline is a little bit sharper, I'd grab this and bring it up. And now I've got more of a chiseled jawline, kind of looks like a pelican. I wouldn't move this up too high because then your character's not gonna look realistic. Keep in mind that when you're creating a metahuman, you can go into the Uncanny Valley and that's the place that you want to avoid because essentially what the Uncanny Valley is is when you have something that looks so realistic but there's a few defining factors that just aren't quite there, it ruins the entire illusion and makes people uncomfortable, hence why it's called the Uncanny Valley. So if you are working with these sculpt tools, hopefully you are an experienced character creator, which I am not, so I actually don't touch these and you know what you're doing. And of course, um, we also have the ability to select which sculpting plane we're on. So when we're moving these things around, it will snap to the correct space. And that's pretty much everything that I currently know about this software. So I'll frame in that face again, and I will play the animation, and you have your own character that you created pretty much by yourself right there. So I just want to kind of cover what I plan to do with MetaHuman once I've done, I've finished reading the documentation and upgraded my PC enough to be able to actually use the facial capture functionality with this. So I want to let you guys know that I will be making a tutorial for exporting this character into Unreal Engine in the future once I'm able to upgrade my PC. I will be covering how to animate this character with both Sequencer and with live link facial capture, which is uh, something that is supported with the MetaHuman Creator software and uh, U project. 
and I want to make like a really cool Max Headroom style show where I review games and I talk to actual characters from the games with kind of fan made models inside of like a little set. Uh, like a little virtual set. So I'm essentially doing like a review show in a really cool looking room with a bunch of game props and game characters walking around. And I think I'd want to cover things like the success of the Nintendo Switch or the history of VR development as a virtual character, as this virtual version of myself. So if I can figure all that out, I want you guys to get used to seeing this face because this is the uh, face that I will be using to talk directly to any of my subscribers or supporters in the future because if you have the tools, why would you not use them all the time? One more thing before I uh, end this video. I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed so far. I'm getting closer and closer to 1,000 by the day, and I'm very excited to cross that threshold. They say it's the hardest. I also want to just let you guys know that I do a VR development breakdown podcast where we take uh, standard games and talk about turning them into VR games every Friday at 6 p.m. Central Time. So far, I have eight episodes which are now uploaded to my YouTube channel and you can watch anytime and they're actually pretty good. I've had professional guests on my show as well as just consumer guests that love nerding out about games and consider it just a really awesome conversation about game design and what's good and bad about certain games and how we would actually take certain game design elements and transfer them over to VR games. Some things to expect from my channel in the future. So I'm going to do a uh, basic blueprinting tutorial series where I teach you how to make a VR level from scratch and package it to your Quest 2 so you can share it with others. And that's going to be kind of like my intro to blueprints. And then I'm going to get into more complex tutorials such as shooting guns, uh, shooting bow and arrows, maybe a little bit of hand tracking there in the future once I figure it out myself. Thing is, is I haven't been putting out a lot of tutorials lately because I am an active student and I want to make sure that I am learning everything I need to learn while I am at school. But this summer when I'm on break and working on my internship, you should expect to see more stuff from me because I'm going to have a lot more off time to produce videos for this channel. I would just like to thank everyone who supported me this far. Your comments mean the world to me when I get to interact with you guys and help you through problems and give you advice or when you tell me that I'm wrong so I can apologize to you and try and fix it in the future. Pretty much every comment that's ever been left on this YouTube channel is something positive and it's a genuine joy for me to read through you guys' comments and talk with you. That being said, thanks for watching my video and I hope to see some really cool stuff that you guys make with MetaHuman Creator.